So in this video, I want to go ahead and take a look at a new feature that was recently released in regards to portals, and that's the portal content management wizard. So I've been doing a lot of demos lately and having to spin up a lot of portal content and was going through and was told actually about this feature a little while ago and went in and kind of used it to set up a few of my entities that I wanted to enable for being displayed on the portal and was really surprised at actually how well it worked and how easy it was and thought it might be a good topic to go ahead and just talk a little bit about. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into the application. Now, if you've ever had to spin up portal content, specifically if you've been trying to create like an entity list or an entity view, you know that there's a lot of steps involved with making sure that you have everything dialed in correctly, you've picked the appropriate views, and you've kind of worked through whatever it is that you need to do in order to make sure that that entity is displayed correctly out on the portal. And, you know, a lot of that hasn't necessarily changed. You still need to make sure that you are doing your due diligence, particularly around your view customization and your item customization, to make sure that that information is indeed displayed displayed the way that you want to inside the application. So again, you're still going to need to go into settings, customizations, customize the system and determine what specific view, particularly what specific entity you want to work with. If you're going to enable it from an entity list or an entity um, entity form perspective. So you'll still want to go into the entity itself and create the specified views and items that you would be looking at from that standpoint. So you'd still go out into the application. You'd still go into your customizations, find that specific entity that you want to go ahead and work with, click on that particular item, open that up and then make whatever specific Pro, uh, information you want to in regards to the application. So you'd still go in, create your views, create your entity lists and, and the other items that you would be looking at. Now, in this case, I do have some, you know, some generalized information that I can use around a custom entity called property. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the standard out of the box created forms and views for this information. But now I'm going to go ahead and enable this for portal content. So I'm going to go into portals. And you'll see there's an administration area now. And so when you go into the administration area, one of the area items that you'll see in here is create portal content. And so this will allow you to create web pages and other items specifically associated with the portal environment that you're in. So if I go ahead and click on create portal content, now it's going to first ask me if I have multiple portals associated with this account, what specific portal or what specific portal I want to associate it with. What do I want to call this item? So I'm going to call this properties. And then what specific page do you want to use? Now, you still need to understand how pages and page templates work inside the portal. If you have a page template, like if you're using an existing case item or something like that, be aware that you know you still may have items that might not necessarily render the way that you want to. So you still may need to come in after the fact into the actual pages that are created and modify the page to ensure that the content is going to display the way that you want the, the items to display inside the app. The, the, the application. You still want to understand where this item is going to be working with. So if this is coming off of the home page, what specific page within your content is going to be the parent of this item? And then do you want to go ahead and display entity information? Now this would create just a, a generalized page for me, but if I come in here and I choose yes, now it's going to go ahead and allow me to associate this with a specific entity. So now I can come in, pick the entity that I want to be able to use, choose that particular entity, and then I have the ability to determine what specific views I want to work with. So this is that item I talked about making sure that we've gone in and we've associated the views appropriately. So here I can see every view that's associated with this particular entity. I can pick what specific items I want to work with. So if I have multiple entities or multiple items, I can choose multiple views to display in here. And then again, what specific form do you want to use? So if you have gone in and created a web specific form, you can go ahead and decide what you want to do from this standpoint. Point. The final piece to this is, do you want to allow record creation? So do I want to be able to create new records from this entity form? And if I do, it'll actually create two versions of the form. It'll create kind of an edit version and a, and a create version. So I'll have two options available. And then do I want to allow anonymous access? This would also be my stepping stone to allow me to understand if I still truly wanted to do, you know, entity permissions and items from that standpoint, I would have to go in and modify and change entity permissions accordingly. But this will at least create the content inside the application. So I'll go ahead and hit create. So now that my content is there, if I go into portals, 
and I go into either entity forms or entity lists, I will now see those options around that specific entity. So here I can see that it created the entity list associated with that property item that I had defined inside the application. If I open this up, it'll all show me what the specific page address is. So now if I wanna you know, use this page address inside the application, I'll have the abilities to be able to kind of define that. But here I can see you know, what views and items had been associated with this. If I go into entity lit or entity Entity forms, then I can see the two actual forms that were also created. And I can see that I have a property create, which put it into uh, insert mode. And then I also have a property details, which is put it into read only mode. And then if I come into my web pages, I'll also see that I have a properties page in here as well. And this properties page is what's going to have my specific information. And not only did it create a properties page, but it also pre created a property create and a property details page. So from there, I'll be able to go ahead and navigate out to my portal be able to go into the sitemap, add that page into the sitemap, and now I would have all of that information there and available for me to work with. Now again, it's not necessarily new items, it's not necessarily anything new from a content perspective, but the ability and the new way to create it does make spinning up entities and entity lists much easier inside the application. So again, that's going to do it for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day. This has been Derek saying thanks again for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.